Hi, BookTube. Welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. So, I promised I was I was thinking about filming this yesterday, but then it got really late. And I wanted to get my exercise done for the evening, so I decided to wait. And I only filmed one video. So, this is the second video I promised to film yesterday. Although, I guess you won't be watching that. Um... So that would have been my video that I uploaded on the 25th of March. Oh, this is now my, the other video I promised I was going to film. So I was thinking about, once again, it was brought to my attention yesterday about how I have, once again, I buy more books than I get through them. And I have so many books that, and I'm doing that thing that, um, Holly from Holly Hearts Books does. I think, I don't know if she was the first person who ever did this, but the whole turning your spines out so that you see the page, well, I guess you're not turning your spines out, but you're turning the books so that the spines are in and the pages are on the out, so you see the pages, and then when you read the book, you turn them around. So I want to be able to do that. I want to do more, like, more, have more books that I turn around so you can see the colorful spines. And there's that, that's always been my goal, but then I always get sidetracked either by shiny new books or books that, like, that take me a long time to read. Like, for instance, where is it? I don't know where that book is. I'm just going to show you. Um... Um, well, I'm thinking about The Count of Monte Cristo. That's over a thousand pages. Or a Stephen King book is a better example. Um, like, this, you see how big this chunker is? And as I was taking down all the books for this video that I want to film, that I decided I want to focus on reading. But then, as I'm taking them down, I'm thinking about all the other books. I'm thinking about, oh, I want to read that. Oh, I need to read that one, too. And, oh, I've you know, and I also was thinking, oh, well, I just, I just don't take it down yet. Because I'm then basically my whole shelf would be mostly empty. So, but I do have a huge pile, like several little piles all over the place near me. Like, I, of course, want to focus on getting these four done first. I want to, I'm going to read another nonfiction this year. This is about Oscar, Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein's and the history of their team up. Like, the guys who wrote, they wrote The Sound of Music. They wrote The King and I, Oklahoma, Pipe Dream, um, Cinderella. There, there were quite a few. They were a great team, and this is the history of how that came to be. And I'm, it's, but it's slow going because the chapters are very long, and of course I'm reading other books right now. Um, like, I'm reading, I wanted to get my first modern classic read this year, so I decided, I chose this one because I had not, I still had not read an F. Scott Fitzgerald book, another one. Other than The Great Gatsby. Twice now. And so I picked, um, my, originally I was going to pick, I had a, I have a hardback one with a naked, with no dust jacket version with, um, The Last Tycoon and This Side of Paradise. I'm guessing they're novellas in a bind up. But then at the time when I was picking my F. Scott Fitzgerald, I was bringing it with me when, earlier this month when I went to see my grandma. And I had, there were a lot of other hardback books I was thinking about bringing with me, so I had decided to bring just another small paperback. Um, and actually, this is going in a very different direction from what I thought it would go. Like, part, like, it's, I'm on part two of the story, and, you know, first I was thinking it, it was one way, and then it turns into something completely different, which is good. I mean, that's the mark of a good writer, is they surprise you. And so far, I still prefer the um the Great Gatsby, which I mean, there's a reason why that's the most famous one written by him, the one that you study in school and everybody you know will know it. It's synonymous with F. Scott Fitzgerald, 
But this is still really interesting, really engaging story, and like I said, it went in a direction that I was not expecting. It is one of those stories where we get the, we have the beginning stuff, and then all of a sudden in the middle of the story we get the history of what led the, these characters to where they are now, in the present, in the, in the present. And that, that's kind of what it's, what it's doing, we're getting background of the couple, the divers, actually. So it's, like I said, it was really surprising in a good way. And I'm also working on, I just, I, like, as you guys know, I finished the Library of Policemen. And now I'm on to, I decided to go ahead and read the Sundog. And I guess if I want to turn this fight out on this one, I gotta read Secret Garden and Secret Window. Although it's up to me, I can turn out the spine if I want to, even if I don't ever read those two. But I did read, I mean, I have read The Long Letters, and I've seen the movie version of Secret Garden and Secret Window. And as I've said before, I'm very apprehensive that I might lose interest in the novella, because I've already seen the movie and I know the story, the, the basic premise. But I do feel like I need to reread The Long Letters, because it's been so long since I've read I mean, I remember the basic premise of it with the weird these people on a plane and somehow I think they end up in like an alternate dimension or something and they have to get across the tarmac and they're being chased by these monsters called the Longlers and there's a blind girl in the story as a main character there's this one weird the guy who's the squeaky wheel of the group he believes in the Longlers he's not a very likable guy he's kind of like if you've seen Rose, Stephen King's Rose Red he's kind of like Emery from what I remember um, Emery Waterman. It's too bad that's not a book. I mean, they do have, he does have someone else write an Ellen Rimbauer diary as a tie-in to the movie, but I wish that movie had been a book. I mean, although my experience, or I should say miniseries, although I would be nervous because sometimes when an author writes something after it's been a movie first, it's not as good in my experience, or like a TV show. But then again, this is Stephen King, so if he did decide to do that, which he probably won't, it would still be pretty, it would, I think it would still be good. So I'm reading The Sun Dog, and so far it makes me think of, um, it makes me think of the, like, the two, the Goosebumps episode in your, the Are You For The Dark episode with the camera. Where, and there's some creature in the can. well, in the Goosebumps episode, it wasn't, it was more like, I think it was a futuristic camera, and some, it was something about the camera, I, I don't remember, I don't know if I ever saw that episode, but, um, and then in Dark for the Dark, there was like a gremlin in the can in the camera, that would give you nothing but bad luck, that could potentially hurt, could potentially kill you. It kind of reminds you that, I mean, I'm assuming this came out first, and maybe those two were, those two episodes were in one or were ah, was inspired by that by this this story this novella. Again, let me check the copyright date. So this, I guess it is, I guess maybe because, yeah, this came first, because I think it's because Orson... Is this the 90s? I guess it came out in the 90s. Early 90s. I mean, those, so those might have been inspired by this novel, by that novel, because there is a camera and... Something we, there was an accident that almost happened that a character, some of the characters of the family members of our protagonist got hurt. They didn't die or anything, but there was, they, they almost, they killed, the guy's sister got hurt. And of course, he has that narrow-minded character that does not believe in the supernatural or doesn't, you know, doesn't really, and then these people, they don't really go to church, not that we really go to church either. 
Um, but there's always that cyn- you gotta always in these stories you gotta they're always sort of that cynical. But yeah, it's realistic. I mean, there are people that are cynical and don't have and don't believe in a lot of things, or they just they believe in others. Like they don't believe in supernatural or things that they can't explain. Um, so I'm working on that, and then I don't know if I I probably need to start progressing a little more on on. The Stand by Stephen King, and then, but I think I should also go into Full Dark, No Stars. It's just, I chose Four Past Midnight because I had, that was one of my early, my earlier Stephen King books I've had for years, along with It. And, um, so I needed to get that one, get through that one, finally. Of course, I'd say that, like, it's, like, it's a stress, or it's, like, or it's, like, oh, oh, I have to do this, like, I'm dreading it, but it's not. It's just, I've had it for so long that I need to stop neglecting it. Which is kind of, this is probably what this video is about. And then the next one you guys saw on the thumbnail was this one, the second, The Exile Queen by Sin Williams China. This is the second book in the Seven Realm series. It's a, it's a four book series. But the chapters are longer than anticipated. I mean, I just, or, I should say more. I forgot that the chapters were actually really long. Could be really long. I mean, not super long. I mean, I'm probably exaggerating it because they're not that long. Like, ten pages. Well, ten twenty pages. So it's not terrible, but it's still like it's not good to read this in bed when I'm tired, especially after I took a Benadryl, because I actually have my skin. My skin is so sensitive. I break out really easily, and my skin gets dry all the, like, really easily, and so now I have a rash in the middle of my leg, and then I have it on my arm, on my, right, like, right around here, all the, and thinking about it makes me all itchy, so I had to take a Benadryl, and it's nothing, it's not that bad, it is really irritating, and it's not, it doesn't help that I really love taking hot showers, so all it, all it really is is just super itchy. And kind of red, but it's not, it's not terrible. It's not like, but anyway, and so this is the second one. Like I said, like this picks up where the Demon King left off, where characters, our main characters are on their own, both on their own journeys, dealing with the consequences and realizing the truth about their world. And I don't, I still can't figure out, I don't know if they're going to be the two, they're going to be the main couple. Is there going to be a couple in the store or not? I mean, there was an attraction established when they meet before, but are they going to meet again? I don't I don't know. I mean, obviously, I haven't got very far in the book. But so far, the only guy that Race is interested in is in, um, I can't remember his name. Let me see. Amon, Amon, the um, who is a guard and the and the older brother actually of um, the brother of Micah, who also likes Reza. And he's a he's a her guard. He's supposed to be her protector, her guardian. And of course, he's not. They it's the whole that we've been friends for so long, and then we end up realizing we like each other and we fall in love. But he can't. He can't have any romantic feelings for her because that would break the rules in a way, and she doesn't understand that herself. She doesn't know that that he's not allowed to. They're not allowed to be together because he's supposed to be her protector, her guard, her warrior. Just the fact that she really has feelings, she has strong feelings for him, and he has strong feelings for her, but they can't be together because, and she doesn't understand that. And of course, she's also a, a more a hormonal teenager. And has the weight of the world on her shoulders. And that was the one good thing was her relationship with Amon. And now that's falling apart. And it would save him a lot of trouble if he just told her. Instead of like pushing her away and you know, trying to push her away. If he would just tell her. But maybe he's thinking if I tell her he's going to keep trying. But maybe at least she would understand why. And resist and try herself to not be so susceptible to her feelings for him and her attraction to him. 
if she at least knew why. But then Razor was, is stubborn, and she would probably think, who cares? You know, why? Why should we, you know, it's my life, and it's your life, and we should do what we want. But, so, I don't know if he's going to be the end game, or maybe there's even going to be a love triangle between, like, with Amon and, and Han. I think it's Han, but it's spelled like Han, like Han Solo, like, as in Han Solo. Um... But I don't, I just really, I want, um, so I don't, I don't know who I like. I mean, like, Amon is a very frustrating character, but she loves him and wants to be with him. And, you know, Han, Han or Han, I really like him. But they haven't had any real moments since they met in the first book. Because now they've been separated again and they, they haven't, they really didn't get enough time together to get to know each other and, form a relationship, other than he kidnapped her and held her hostage for a moment, for a little while. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know who she's going to end up with. I'm curious. Okay, so those are the ones I'm going to get to first. Now on to everything else. Um, okay, so let's see. I want to read Time of Contempt soon because I want to get this read before the new season starts. And I've already read Blood of Elves. So I think I'm good there. Um, so I don't know what it's going to cover, what what the um, the show is going to cover. I mean, is it going to focus on, Is are we going to get Blood of Elves and whatever happened in Blood of Elves? Is that going to be what season two is about? Is it going to go into this book? I need to, so I need to read this one, and then I need to get, I think it's Baptism, Baptism of Fire. I need to buy that one. Yeah, Baptism of Fire is the next one. Oh, in case you don't know, this is basically a series about this guy who is a monster hunter named Geralt. He has these superpowers. So he's kind of like a slayer. Or he's like, he's... He's kind of, he is like, he's like a slayer, essentially. And he finds out he's destined to prank this little girl, um, Siri. And their destiny is also tied with, um, I already forgot her name. What was her name? I, I already forgot her name. Um, I, I don't, see, um, I can't remember, I can't remember her name, what is her name? The, the sorceress, I, I cannot remember her name, dang it. But, um, but anyway, well, the, the, the sorceress, um, I don't remember her name, but they are destined to protect this little girl, Siri, who is destined to change the world, maybe even, um, probably to save it and stuff. They're like, it's like, basically, instead of the story of the Chosen One, it's the story of the Chosen One's protector, in a way. I kind of like these covers. I know a lot of people don't like them. Because they're not, but, it, like, it makes me think of the, um, what the video game looks like, what the video game would probably look like. But it's, it's very, it's, it's really, it's a really cool series. It's very different, though, from what the, a lot of today's, what we, um, it's, like, a very, I can't remember where the author is from. But this is the, well, technically it would be the fourth book. In the series, if you count the, I love that they call it. It's like Shrek slash The Princess Bride meets The Brothers Grimm meets Castlevania. But um, if you count the two short story collections, 
which kind of introduced the character, and then some of the stories kind of introduced the situation that the the overarching plot. Um, so I guess this is still concerning the fourth book. So either way, I need to I need to read this one, and then I need to buy Baptism of, of Fire. I keep meaning to buy at the um at the bookstore, but there are so many other books. And this, and then I always when I'm saying this because these books are usually like. This is fifteen ninety nine, so it's like sixteen dollars if you want to get this size. And I would rather get this one than, because even though yeah I say I don't I'm not as big on aesthetic, it does look a little weird when you have books that are different sizes. Like it does bother me when all my Ken Follett books, that some of them are I have one of them that is a mass market paperback. It it is a little bit weird. And same thing with all my Stephen Kings are all different. Like I have a handful of. The hardbacks with the dust jacks and everything, and then I, I all, but most of them are paperback, because I used to always get paperback editions, like the Signet Classic editions. Like, stop doing that. Like, like this one, you can tell it's old because of the, not just because of the pages, but the, how it's, that's a Signet one. I need that one. And then the other one, the other series that I want to read soon, that I need to read the next book in the series, is because there is going to be, although it's because of this whole virus and everything, it has, the filming of this particular series has been pushed back. And I don't know about this one. I'm not sure about this one. I mean, I haven't heard anything because they might have already filmed it, filmed this one, the next season of this one. But, um, or they're working, like, but the Wheel of Time series, the second book in The Great Hunt, I need to read this one. Because I don't know when it's going to start up. And now, of course, there, are, like I said, there's been a, um, they have to stop filming because of, we don't, with this whole virus and everything. So who knows if it's going to, what's going to happen next with it. When it's going to finally go on the air. Um, maybe it won't be until next year. I don't know. But so those two, I need to get to. I also need to get to Wonder Smith. This is the sequel to Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow. It's about a little girl who is told that she is bad luck for her in her town. She's one of the cursed children. So everything that happens, she's blamed for every bad thing. Like if the animal dies or they lose money or something, then it's it's Morgan's fault, so she has to constantly write letters to everybody at the end of to write letters saying, I'm sorry for all the bad things I've caused. And she's told when she turns 11 that she will die on her 11th birthday. But then, on that day, right before she turns 11, this mysterious man, Jupiter North, comes, rescues her, and takes her away to his, where he is in the Wondrous Society takes her away to, I can't remember what the place is called, um, I think it's Nevermore, so that she can participate in these trials to be part of the, um, the Wonder Society, and, and that's all I'm gonna say, and then this is the second one, so spoiler alert, she survives eventually, but there's a little bit of something that we find out at the end of the book that will cause problems for Morgan. That will make her situation a little more complicated and un... But isn't that how it always goes? There's always something that happens to make your situation... Um, so next is Temeraire Book 3, The Black Powder War. I wanted to... I want to read this now because, um... I feel like I need to get this... I feel like I need I need to get this read so I can you know I can tell be like I want to buy the fourth book but I'm I need to wait I'm waiting until next month after after July after that first weekend July into August because the convention hopefully won't get canceled <laughs> although every it gets every time like my Terry or my parents mention I get so annoyed because I was like I don't want to think about it. I don't want to jinx it I don't want to dwell on the possibility I want it for now a whole bunch of the hope that it will happen I don't want to get all crazy and stuff and think oh, I was going to get cancelled because I mean it's like three four months three two months away so 
it might not. As long as, I mean, it's going to start getting warm again. And as my grandma had said to me the other day on the phone, warm weather could potentially kill the virus. So maybe it will finally start dying out, and by then things will be okay. And they, and they haven't even canceled yet because they're not sure what's going to happen. They don't know if it's going to cancel, if this is going to, if they're, if this is going to be lasting all the way until then. So I think they're just waiting a little while. Maybe by June they'll cancel if it's still going on, then they might cancel. Which of course means, which I also realized that might, if it's still going on this summer, in the summer, then we might not, people might not use the pool anymore. <laughs> but this is the third book in the Tamar Rare series. Um, Black Powder War. It's basically the idea of in the Napoleonic Wars, what if we had dragons? And we have our main character, Captain Will Lawrence, and he is an and he and his crew come across a Chinese a um a Chinese ship that's going to deliver a dragon egg to Napoleon, and they intercept it. And some and of course someone has to be assigned to the dragon, the dragon egg. And somehow the dragon, but the dragon ends up when, after the dragon bomb is born, it bonds with Will, with Lawrence, which is a bit of a surprise. And he decides to call the dragon Tamarare. Well, in book two, the Chinese, in book two, the Chinese want, the dragon want Tamarare back. And that kind of puts, puts a damper on their, relate on Tamarare and Will's relationship. It makes it a little more complicated. And I don't know what this one is about. I haven't really looked at the back. Um, okay, better not read that because that's going to waste time. So I want, I mean, I was going to wait until I got book four, but I don't know when that will happen, so I should probably go ahead and read. I just don't like reading unless I have the next book after that comes after the current book. At least the current book, that in this case, the current book I have, not the current book out. I don't like to read it. And then not knowing when I'm going to get the next book to jump, be able to jump in the, into the next book. Like I think that, and that partly is due with that always happens with series, especially if they're new series. And I just get, I have to buy the next book in the series, the book that just came out. And then, and it also, I think it also sounds from years of, um, take a long time before I bought the next book in a series. So I don't know why it feels like I don't read. I didn't, I read a lot more now than I did back then before we moved here, before I got my job. I mean, I, I read a lot, but I read a lot of the same books because there was no guarantee I would have it. And I always went just straight to the same section, like the paranormal urban YA fantasy section. I love, I love this series. I'm really loving this series. Tamar Rare is adorable, and he's like a, he's like a dog crossed with a human child, and I like Lawrence's character, and and it's been compared to a series that I actually DNF'd. Um, the one about the woman who was studying dragons. It's a similar idea of dragon. What if there were real drag? Whether dragons really existed in our world? But I would, you know what I would love to do? I would love to read a book that where dragons are in America. So I think that would be interesting. I mean, I understand that the, the terrain of Europe maybe fits the whole dragon idea better, but I think it would be very interesting to see a dragon in America. See how they would handle it. There are those two. I also need to um read... I finally need to read because the next book, I think the next week just came out, um, but A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and so I'm surprised that I haven't read it. I'm disappointed in myself, I should say, that I have not read it. This is actually my sister's friend, my sister's friend Wendy, her college roommate, has re already read it, and she liked it, So I, and I'm the one who loves Beauty and the Beast. But I only got to it yet, so I need to read that this year. I think I should read that for my birthday month. I have so many books here, so I probably won't be able to, because this video would be really long if I went through all these books. I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe I could do it really quick. Um,
I also need to, I want to finally start reading this one. Because I'm trying to read Brandon Sanderson's shorter books first. So, Avernal Entrus. And now I want to read Warbreaker next. And then I will probably jump back into The Way of Kings. Um, and what, one of the thing, one of the major things I hear about this is the cool, the system, the magic system is one of his most interesting magic systems with, like, colors and stuff. So it's kind of like the Black Prism series. I don't think that's, I don't know if that's what it's called. But by Brent Weeks, it's kind of a similar idea with the magic system with colors. Um, so I'm really excited to read, I really want to read this one. And also the story sounded kind of interesting, like the idea of these two, one of these, one of these girls is meant to marry this guy, and the other one is meant for her to be like a warrior or something, and, but the fa their father's lost and it has them switch places, and there's a god that doesn't want to be a god, he doesn't care about being a god, he doesn't understand why people worship him. Um. And also, I always like political drama and fantasy. I don't like real-world politics, but I do like politics and fantasy. I find that it's really interesting. Um, this is another one of the, my earlier series. I restarted it and read the first book, and I need to finish the second book for my second reread, but it's been so long, and I don't want to start over. And then it's Clash of Kings, the second book in the Song of Ice and Fire series. And I keep saying, oh, I finished when I'm done with the se when the TV series is done, then I will finally read the books. I still have not read it yet. <laughs> um, because the series, and so I think that's why it doesn't bother me as much. I'm not, I'm not obsessing over the fact that George R. R. Martin has not read, written the last two books. It doesn't bother me because I'm so behind in the series. But, um. Where am I? Am I in the middle of a chapter? I hate when I do that when I'm in the middle of a chapter. Oh, damn it. I'm in the middle of a chapter. Okay, so. I wonder, we must be in like Cersei's, one of Cersei's chapters because they mentioned Lancel. Or either, oh no, Tyrion. I knew we were in one of the Lannisters. Um. I mean, it's so, like, when I read these books. Like, books like this size, I can get into the story, it's just, it's so many pages that I have to read. You know, there's a lot. And I'm used to YA books that are, like, even if they are over, like, 700 or something, or five, over 500 pages, they're still, it's, YA is a different kind of writing style than adult books. You get through YA faster, at least I do anyway. Um, I also need to finally start Lady Midnight. This is Cassandra Clare's Art Dark Artifices trilogy, the first book. I love this fine, the new spine. I love the new designs. I mean, I I love the original designs. I thought they were cool. You know, I mean, I mean, I get how they're not really super appealing. The whole shirtless person or woman in a, or person shirtless man or girl in a t-shirt. But I mean. I, I thought it was kind of cool, you know. But this is with the char with characters that were introduced in the last book of um, the Mortal Instruments series. This is about their story. Um, and I I said that after I read um the the Sh Tales from Shadow and Academy, I would start it, but I still have, again, this is another one that I said I would read after I read a certain book, and I still have not started it yet. And then another old book in the series, an older book that I've had for a long time is this one. This was my first little game that I ever bought. Um, oh, and I guess I will never watch the show unless I buy it. I will never read it to watch the show because who's going to be on Stars? No, I don't think we're going to have stars anymore. So unless it's like on one of those um, streaming networks or um, maybe on YouTube TV, because I think we're getting that now, I won't ever be able to, you know, watch the series. But um, this is about a guy named Shadow. 
You can't get mixed up in the problems and the conflict between a bunch of gods, old and new. Like, you have the old gods, the old Greek, Norse, Roman gods, all those people. And then you have all these new gods, the god of technology, the goddess of sex, and stuff like that. And, um, they're all, like, and you, they're all, like, at war with each other, and then you have Shadow is kind of the guy that they put the human, the moral that they kind of put in the middle of this. And he's being talked to by this guy named Mr. Win Wednesday, who actually I have already found out that he's Odin, Thor and Loki's father. But it's it's really good. It's just, again, another long book. I mean, it doesn't look that long, but and also it depends on the type of writing. Like sometimes certain kinds of writing... I get restless. I still like it. I enjoy the story, but then there are times when I'm just not in the mood for that kind of writing. Like, it's a very gritty writing style. I need to read those. Um, I need to also finish The Bone Center's Donner, which is an Amy Tan book. Um, I want to finish this one so I can give it to my sister. Oh, this is a border sticker. So this came, this was around when this this person bought this when the store borders still existed. Um, so this is an old book, probably from the nineties. And I want to read this so that I can eventually like give it to like maybe my mom or my sister. Because I know my sister like she doesn't read a lot anymore, but I figure I'll pass it on to her. Of course, she might say, "I don't have time. Just save it for later." And I don't know when later will be for her. So I should stop giving her books. It's just. I am someone that even though I don't like being recommend, told recommended books and told, oh, you should check this book out, you might like it, I still, I, uh, I'm a hypocrite because I still like telling there are people that I think that I normally think would like a book, but then, you know, there's always some kind of reason why they wouldn't or they just would never read it. Um, but yeah, I always associate Amy Tan with my sister because she's kind of indirectly the one that got me interested in Amy Tan in the first place. But I'm gonna, I mean, if anything, I can give it to my mom. She might be interested in it. Or my dad. My dad might like it. I should give it to him. I should see if he would be interested. Because there is one woman he golfs with that gave him a bunch of Lisa C books. And he liked those. Although it was one of these things where I think he only read it because he felt obligated to. But if you like those, he might like Amy Tan. I'll have to give it. I'll have to give him this. I mean, I could see if he would be interested. He probably won't be, though. Because, I mean, it takes so long. Even if you find something that you like, you might not get into it right away. Um. Okay, let me put these books down, because. Um, they're, I'm already getting tired, and it's 2.20, almost 2.30, so this is going to take forever to get through all these. Um, there's so many. I picked so many books. Um, let's see. I'm just gonna list them all. Um, so I need to read God's Grave. Um, that's the next book, the Never Night Trilogy. I want to get that read. But I, although I want to keep debating if I just, maybe I'm just starting to have lost interest. But then every time someone brings it up to, on Booktube, then I think about it again. It's the same. That's, that's what's going on with Outlander, too. Every time, like, my parents or my aunt brings up Outlander, all of a sudden I'm reminded again that I haven't read it yet. And it's like, I feel like I have to read it. And it's like, stop putting pressure on me. I mean, they're not doing it on purpose. But it's just I want to tell them. It's like, okay, stop talking about it. And don't make it. And I'm not joking. Because my dad is that person who... When I say, don't talk about something and get all frustrated, and, like, he'll tease me about me getting annoyed and angry. You know, not in a mean, bullying kind of way. Not like that. Not like a bully, but in a blank, playful, just messing with me. You know, you know how dads do. They give their kids a hard time. They tease their kids, you know. Um, but... So, I, I would, you know, if you were, he'd be like, alright, we can't say anything about it. He'd be all overdramatic about it. 
And, but yeah, that one, so I don't know if I'll ever read Outlander or God's Grave. That's, I mean, it's a potential, like, and I don't mean Outlander, I say Voyager, and continue the Outlander series. And it's the same thing with, like, the graphic novels. You know, there's this, I want to prove I am determined. And of course, you know, my friend Virginia, my coworker, who's my friend Virginia, is like, don't worry, but it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. You don't like comic books or graphic novels. And she's like, oh, it's okay. But then the fact that she said that makes me even more determined. Or the fact that I feel like Terry doesn't even believe me when I say I'm interested in comic books. That I want to read them. Or that I have read some of ElfQuest. So I'm thinking, and then, but the more people say, you know, okay, like, I make it sound like you don't believe me. Then it makes me even more determined to prove them wrong. But then at the same time... I still haven't picked it up yet. So I need to do that. I need to finally do that. It's just I wish people wouldn't bring it up because as soon as I start thinking about it, then coincidentally someone with that, the people that are trying to get me to read, recommend a book to me, or want me to read something for them, they'll bring it up coincidentally just as I'm thinking about it. And then that will, once again, push me away from wanting to read it. Which I know that sounds weird, but it's just... So I also need to read, I want to read, I want to finally read The Magicians because I know what I'm getting into. I mean, I know a lot of people have issues because there's problematic elements, and I understand, I respect that. I mean, but, at the, but I still want to read it, so I don't want to give up on it. And one, you know, so I need to start reading it. Although, the series is almost over, though, unfortunately. It might be over because I don't know how many more episodes left. Because I don't, there's... I'm currently, there's two more episodes that I need to watch. So I don't know if that, if it's going to keep going or not. But and, but the good news, hopefully if that convention does not get cancelled because of the stupid virus, then I might, I'll get to meet some of the actors from the show. I'll be very disappointed though and very, I'll still, I was still prost, even though I'm like, I'm not going to think about it. I don't want to think about it because I don't want to be, I'm probably still going to be upset if it get cancelled. But The Magicians... Um, Bloody Rose, the sequel to The Way of King. I mean, Kings of the Wild. I keep, I always get Way of Kings and Kings of the Wild mixed up. Their titles. Um, Enchanté, which is a book set in France. I need to read that one because in the, I don't know when the next book is coming out. I've seen it on Goodreads, but I don't remember what date they said or what year they said the next book will come out. Um... I need to read the prior, read the orange tree. That's one of the ones that I've started. I'm in the middle of it, and I need to finish it. Um, the Odyssey, of course. And I have so many. The Shadow of the Wind, I want to read. I've start, I started that one when I was at my grandma's, Fall of Giants, by Ken Follett. That's one of his, but that the problem with that one is it's hard to travel with because it's a big book. It's a trade paperback, so it's huge. So it's harder to travel. And that's why I like mass market paperbacks, because then I can just throw one in my purse. Um, Magician, Magician Apprentice, I need to read that one. That's by Raymond Feist. I wanted to go ahead and get in that series because it's one that I have not heard about on BookTube. And I want to discover this on my own. I want to get into it on my own without feeling like eventually, oh, it's not a series. It's not a special to me because, I mean, I mean, it's special, but it's not like it's someone else who's already obsessed with it and introduced me to it. I want it to be kind of a series that I discover on my own. And I also need to read Barchester Towers, the second book in the, um, these are good titles. The second book in the... In the, I cannot pronounce what the series is called, but it's after this sequel to The Warden. Um, and I don't want this to be one of those series that I, it, I have years in between before I read the next book in the series. I don't want that to be the case with that one. I also need to continue with The Odyssey. Um, Carnival of the Dead I want to keep going with. And now that I've read The Night Circus, I want to go ahead into... Um, Aaron Morgan Stern's the, um, the Starless Sea. I want to get into that one. 
I want to I want to finally know that because my plan was to read the Night Circus first. And part of it feels like before I continue on with the um, Once Upon a River, I should read the Thirteenth Tale. Oh, I have read um because that was the first Diane Sutterfield book I read, and I really loved it. Um, let's see. There is also here I got a lot of sequels. Carnival of the Dead is another one. The Poppy War. And there's quite a few here, not just God's Grave, but there's a few here, or Clash of Kings. There's a few where there are part of a series that I need to, I was like, okay, I'll come, I'll finally read the next, once I have the next book of the series. Like, I was waiting to get the next book, and I finally got it, and I still have not read it. Um, that is New Valor by John Gwynn, which is the second book in the Faithful and the Fallen series, and I have book two, so I have the first three books now, thanks to Terry, actually. Um, and the, um, the, what is it, what is it called? See, I'm looking at, I have the books right here, most of them. Some of them I have over on this side, too. Um, the, the Night Country, that is the next book in the Hazelwood series. I need to read that one. I bought that one, now I can read it. Um. And I need to read um, John Adams on 1776. And I, I decided, by David McCullough, I also decided I want to get to this one soon. because So I can give this to maybe see if one of Jesse's friends would like this one if I ever see them again. Um, and this is Lauren Graham's memoir. And it's about her career so far, like from... She is the actress from Gilmore Girls. She plays Lorelai. She's on Parenthood. Um, I can't think of what else. Those are the most significant. The ones that most people know about, I think. that um, Gilmore Girls and Parenthood. And I think, oh, and she's also, and she was in that movie, um, the sequel to Bruce Almighty. Evan Almighty, where it's like kind of a retelling of Noah's Ark. And Evan is like a politician, and he and God speaks to Morgan Remish, and they speak to him and tells him that there's a new flood and he needs to build an ark. And she plays no she plays Evan's wife. And I don't know what else she's done. That's those are the only ones I know of off the top of my head of things that I, because she's not someone whose career I followed. Like, I didn't get into Parenthood, I only got into Gilmore Girls, and then I recognized her as, as um, in Evan Almighty. I don't know if she's done anything else, I'm sure, I mean, obviously she has, but I just don't know what it is. Um, but it was one of these things where I saw it at the roast office, and of course books there are like four, four or five dollars is the most expensive, so I got it. Um, I think it was three dollars, because I think paperbacks are three. And then mass markets are two. Um, there was, like I said, I have so many here. It's just very overwhelming to go through them all. Um, I definitely, once I finish the Odyssey, even though I shouldn't have read those books first, I'm going to read the Iliad. And like I said, I'm really, and as I said in the last video, I really am into the Odyssey. It's a really good story. You know, very interesting. And like I said, in the most recent chapter, I think Odysseus was being an idiot. A, Mask got a little cocky. I thought I started Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. I need to read that one. And then um, Donna Tart. I liked the Security. I did not like the Goldfinch. So now I need to read um, The Little Friend by her. So I, may, I might like that one better. The Goldfinch was kind of boring. It was hard for me to get into the main character. I mean, she's a beautiful writer. The writing's beautiful, but it's just like, it was, it felt kind of, the plot felt kind of tedious. It was such a chunky book. I mean, you, I want the plot, to, if I'm going to read a chunky book, it needs to be a very engaging plot. And I feel like The Secret History, yeah, there were times when it got tedious, but it was also a very engaging plot and very interesting. And the, the people, the characters in the story were really interesting, too. It's like, 
I wanted to know more about them and understand them and understand their motivations and everything. I could have done this better. I know I could, I know I could have done this video a lot better. Oh, um, I guess I need to finish my reread of Harry Potter and my reread of the Lunar Chronicles. I'm, I'm on the last book in both series. Uh, Rise of Empire. I read the first book in the Ryria Chronicles that I need to the first volume. So now I need to... Revelations, Revelations, Ryria Revelations. So now I need to finally read this one. I wonder if, I wonder if the author was kind of inspired by um, the book of Revelations in the Bible. I mean, I don't know that that whole... When, let's for the sake of argument story how that that story in the Bible goes but um, but this is a really I had a really good time and a, I had a fun time with the first book in the series it's these two guys these two guys who are thieves and they get hired this Hadrian Blackwater and Royce Melbourne and they are hired for a job to steal a sword. Little do they know that at the same time they're stealing the sword, the king has just been murdered, so they get framed for the murder. And now it's... And this first line is about them trying to prove that they didn't, and helping the prince and princess whose father who of the kingdom say get revenge on the man that killed them, who really killed their father. And there's some interesting secrets and in, um, that you find about the characters in the fir by the end of the first volume, and they will continue, or at least one of the characters. I still, I'm still holding up on my hearing about Hadrian is correct about his character. Just so interesting. This is smaller as far as size, physical size, than Theft of Swords. Um. But anyway, so, sorry, this is just kind of a rambly video. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I shouldn't have been more, better organized with this video. I'm gonna try to organize a list, the problem being that every time I, my list end up going longer and longer. What I need to do is, like, write it down instead of typing up the document. That way I can, it will be you know, a little bit, which, I mean, which is weird saying this, because, you know, with computer it's easy to erase things and all that, but with writing, you know, it will give me some time to really think about it. I mean, I mean, I know that doesn't make any sense, but writing things out allows, it's, it's, it's just, sometimes it's more natural to, to just write, actually write with a pen or pencil instead of typing. I mean, although I love the sound of clicking on keys keys. The keys on the keyboard. I love that clip sound. I don't know why. But, um, it would be, I, I can't really explain why, but I feel like it might be better if I write it out first and then type it. Oh, the books I need to read. And then the other problem is that there are so many books that are like big chunker books I know it will take me a long time to read. Um, but anyway, so I'm, since I've rambled, I think I've rambled long enough about my, what I want to do in the next two months and for the spring months. And as you can see, I'm not one of those people who read fluffy books in the springtime. I never read, fl I can't, I will, throughout the year, I might occasionally read something more fluffy and fun. But like, I guess in a way you could say, um, a Curse on Dark and Lonely or Morgan Cove could potentially be fluff. But, you know, it's actually a good thing that the library is closed because then it, these few weeks where however long this virus is going to last and we have to stay inside, it gives me time to actually make a dent in my bookshelves. So, I, like I said, I want to turn my spines out. I want to finally turn several spines out. I want to turn, like, at least, like, 20, maybe 20, 20 or 30 spines. I want to turn out like 20 spines. Like, let's say that I want to 20, I want to turn out 20 spines out. Um, so you can see that. 
it's just gonna take me a long time. But I need to learn to be patient. Because I know I'm a slow reader. So if you guys like this video and didn't mind my rambling, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification below when I to see when I post new videos. I hope you're enjoying your reading. And I will talk to you all later. Alright, bye!